you know, it's interesting. It seems like since the beginning of this year, I don't know what light switch has been flipped, but there's a lot more activity. Hello, welcome to Mortgage Minute. My name is Matt Thomas, and I'm a local realtor in my 15th year. Uh, my co-host is Brian Daywald. He's a highly acclaimed local mortgage lender in his 20th year, and both of us serve the Denver and surrounding areas. Today, as usual on Mortgage Minute, we're going to be um, jumping into some updates on market conditions, what's going on in the mortgage world, what's going on in the real estate world. Um, last week was a very interesting week, lots, filled with lots of news um, and some good news and some uh, some volatility in the mortgage market. So, Brian, tell us about what happened last week. If if I recall, things were good, moving the right direction in midweek, and then later in the week they uh, kind of reverse course. Yeah. So the good news is is that you know we we gained a little ground and then we lost a little ground, and rates are ultimately pretty flat, right? If we look at a rate today versus a week ago, it's it's about where it was. So that's the good news. Really, there was just a ton of data last week. There was some PCE right inflationary. Uh, numbers that came out. The Fed met last week. They're, the big one lately has been employment news. So that came out on Friday. So lots of kind of ups and downs. There wasn't anything that was really surprising all the way around, which is, you know, except for the unemployment news or the employment reports. But outside of that, everything was kind of as expected, which is, you know, why we didn't have huge swings one way or the other. We lost a little ground at the end of the week. We made up some ground earlier in the week. So, you know, relatively flat overall. That's right. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, you know, Fed, uh, the Fed Chair Powell, Jerome Powell, has been in the news uh, quite a bit since Wednesday um, when they came out and, and spoke. There was an interview on 60 Minutes that I think a lot of people are seeing. Not everyone you know, pays attention to exactly what's going on with Jerome Powell, but when you put him on 60 Minutes, a lot more people seem to be uh, exposed to him. He sure. mentioned inflation increases have slowed for 11 months and that they've got lots of good data, but they're kind of waiting on a good maybe six months more of data. And that's why they kind of pushed off saying that they're going to cut rates potentially until, you know, midway through the year. He was asked if, if you know, what's the, what's the danger of moving too soon? They said that um, the, the, the data maybe just isn't truly indicative of where inflation is headed. I know you sp speak to that quite a bit. W what would you say is going on there with the, you know, with revised data? It seems like they put out data, everyone reacts to it, and then there's a revision of some kind. Yeah. And the thing I would agree with you. And the thing that gets a little frustrating is that the markets don't necessarily react well when the revisions come out. You know, the employment news is the one that's easiest to look at and just say, you know, here's our report. And then the market reacts or overreacts or whatever they do when that comes out. And then the revision comes and the market doesn't really change any. So, you know, it's a little frustrating just because it seems like they're a little slow to make some of these ideas and decisions really come to light. But I think they're still waiting for a little bit more you know, information so that they can really feel confident that they're not moving too fast, too quickly when it comes to the Fed anyway. The interviewer actually asked as well, like, you know, what's the danger of, you know, taking too long to react and, and, and change rates? And he mentioned that, you know, if they keep the reins too tight or the, the clamps too tight on the economy, that the economic activity will slow. And that's where you get a recession. Right. They didn't say that we were out of the woods in terms of a soft landing or a recession, but they did, you know, he did seem optimistic. That's what seems to be where we're headed. And of course, that's because of the, the uh, mostly because of the jobs and the, the employment data. He did say that he, you know, expects inflation to continue to come down for the next six months. And that's why they, they think that they're headed towards a six month mark is where they think that, that uh, the rates will be adjusted. So, right. And I'm curious, ultimately, what you and I talk about on a, on a regular basis is what does that do? I mean, we're not economists, right? We're, we're realtors and mortgage folks looking to help people to you know, make the best decisions for themselves. So what does that mean for housing? What are you seeing right now? You, I think you said you had a good couple of interesting stories that happened over the weekend. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. It seems like since the beginning of this year, I don't know what light switch has been flipped, but there's a lot more activity than there seemed to be going, you know, the holidays are always a slow time, but, you know, generally speaking, 2023 was a relatively, not relatively, unbelievably slow year for us. And, you know, it seems like uh, out of the gate here, uh, you know, folks are, are a lot more excited about real estate um, for whatever reason. I don't know if they're, you know, finally just up to, you know, here are the numbers and it's not really going to get any better. Um, I don't know if some people are expecting some sort of a crash or a dip. Of course, that hasn't really happened. Um, but yeah, just a couple of quick, you know, stories. We had uh, four or five families out looking this last weekend and I spoke with two of them this morning. Here we are on a Monday. The first one was, I believe it was a million three fifty was the asking price. Uh, it went for a million four fifty. 
all cash. So we, you know, our, our folks couldn't compete with that. Uh, there was another one at 840, I believe, that went under contract at 960 that was, again, all cash. So, you know, it's crazy how, um, you know, things just change so quickly. If this was th two or three months ago, we were, you know, asking for a price reduction. And we still see some of those, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's just interesting to have two of those, particularly at the bigger price points like that, uh, that are just going so quickly uh, for such, ca you know, all cash. So interesting. Yeah, I heard similar stories and kind of witnessed some similar things as well. You know, you, there's some houses you'll see sitting for 150, 180 days. These are houses that, I mean, if you think about when that was, that was end of summer, late or early fall, maybe they were listed. Uh, last fall was a challenging time to move properties because the interest rates were just on the increase. Right. And, um, you know, we've seen a lot of those houses start to go off the market. Those ones that sat and sat and sat, they kind of have started to disappear um, because it's what inventory is out there. But a lot of people are trying to get out ahead of that spring market. Uh, you know, I think with the news about the from the Fed saying that the interest rates might not drop right away, you know, we'll see where the market carries that. But, uh, you know, it seems like, you know, there are people out there right now that are just trying to get ahead of what what could be eventually a little bit easier times to buy in terms of um, rates. But, we, you know, as we've discussed a million times, once those rates goes go down, the uh, uh, you know, the, the prices are likely to go up. So clearly this weekend, as you're witnessing, um, you know, there's quite a bit of a competition already. True. There were a couple other uh, situations I saw over the weekend where uh, there was, uh, you know, there were seven to nine showings on, on a property in the 800 or 900s. Um, mm -hmm. And that ended up getting three offers. They went over asking price. Uh, mm -hmm. There's one in the 500s that I saw that was, they got three offers as well. Six or seven showings, not a ton. Um sure. But, but no. they ended up with those three offers and, you know, they got uh, right at asking price. So or there just seems to be um, activity and people are really buying for homes right now. So sure, sure. awesome, Brian. Well, I appreciate you sharing that information. Um, I think that, you know, seeing what's going on in the market is very helpful. It's good to know what's driving things right now. And uh, so appreciate your insight as always. And um, until next time, we'll catch up with you soon. Sounds great. Thanks again for having me. Always good to see you. See you, Brian. See you.